In this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about deep research from OpenAI, a tool they have just released to do incredible high quality research. I'm gonna show you what it is, its capabilities, what it can't do, who can use it, and more importantly, of course, how to use it for SEO with more specificity to how to use it to write incredibly high quality content for SEO. We'll get to it straight away. Firstly, who can use this tool? As of the time of this recording, only pro subscribers, meaning those who are paying $200 a month. It's rolling out to plus users soon and everyone else who's got some sort of paid subscription. Keep in mind that even pro users only have 100 deep searches, deep researches per month. I'm sure they might increase that as time goes by, but for now, that's all we get access to. So what is this tool? Deep Research is a new agentic tool that conducts multi-step research on the internet for complex tasks, meaning that something will take you hours, if not days, to research it can do in a couple of minutes. It's powered by the upcoming version of OpenAI's O3 model. This is important because we're going to use O3 Mini to write the blog post. And this model is optimized for web browsing and data analysis. And it can reason as well. It can interpret images, massive amount of text, and even PDFs. This makes it kind of the ultimate research tool because it doesn't just provide you with all this research. It synthesizes it and understands it and provides you the most according kind of result for that. It, it is really amazing. And I've been using it to write content like this incredible blog post that I wrote in a matter of minutes and something that has this de detail of research would have, me take, would have taken me close to a day, to be honest. And I wrote it in a matter of minutes because deep research gave me an incredible amount of high quality research. Now, I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step approach I used to create this blog content. And if you wanna see what deep research is capable of, in terms of blog post writing, I'll leave a copy of this blog post in the video description below so you can take a look at it, read it, and decide if this is a tool that you'd like to use or not. And I'm gonna give you the steps that I took to write this whole thing. I've used it a lot this morning and I wanna show you an output here of it. To be, able to, to be able to actually activate it, if you've got any of the paying accounts, you need to click deep research and then ask it the question. So when I did that for, when I did that this morning, and I wanted to find information about how the SEO industry will evolve in the next few years with AI. And I also wanted to see what are the strategies that are currently working to help websites and businesses rank and also predict what someone can do to stay competitive in SEO so that the website shows up in AI generated results like Google AI generated results, perplexity and GPT search. A task that will probably take you a couple of hours to research. It then asked me a follow-up question. It understood the question, but it wanted to specify what it should focus on. I then answered that and it started going. For this research task, it only took about six minutes and it found 12 sources. Now, the complexity of the task will determine the length it takes to do the research for you. In this instance, this isn't too complex. We're not, we're not asking it how to do rocket science, for example. So six minutes was more than enough. It can take up to half an hour, which is unreal. It then proceeded to give me 16 pages of research on the topic. I know it's 16 pages because I added this all into a Google Doc and it turned out to be 16 pages. Unreal. So then how can you use this to create blog posts? Let's go through that right now. I'm going to start a brand new chat and I'm going to go through, I'm going to select O3 mini and I'm going to select deep research here. I wanna show you how it works live so you can see a step-by-step -step approach here. And we're gonna do something a little bit different. I want to find the potential negative and positive outcomes that will arise from the release of autonomous AI agents into the workforce. I would like to understand how it will impact job security and how businesses can leverage these tools. Something that needs up-to-date research, I've got the deep research enabled and I'm gonna go hit enter. You can see that it's gonna ask me a follow-up question now. So it's asking, could you specify the industries or job sectors that, are more, that you're more interested in? Are you looking for general trends across all industry, focusing on specific fields like manufacturing, finance, healthcare, or tech? Also, would you like insights based on expert predictions, real world cases, studies, or a mix of both? So it's kind of like already acting like a high or well, very smart research assistant where it knows that my question or my 
request wasn't good enough and it needs to get more information out of me to provide me with a better input or with better information. So I'm gonna say here, I am interested in the marketing and SEO market. I wanna understand general trends and I want insights based on expert predictions. I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna start doing the research for me. And it'll update you once it's ready. You can see here that it's starting the research. If we click on this button now, you can kind of see what it's doing in a step-by-step -step approach. So here, the first step, it says, I'm piecing together the impact of autonomous agents on marketing and SEO, examining job security, automation trends, the way to leverage these tools. And then it's doing other searches on those, <laughs> it's doing other searches because it understood the results that it gave it and it needs to explore more directions. It really is quite amazing. I'm going to speed this up and I'm going to show you what it looks like when it finishes. Okay, perfect. So I went back, took a little break and it completed the research in four minutes. Again, it's nothing that's extremely complex, but that's what we do in this channel, SEO news and things like that. So I wanted to keep it on the same niche. If you click on the research completed, it'll show you the activity. So the thought process that it took to do that. Uh, this thought process is something that I probably wouldn't do myself uh, just because I'm actually not that good at researching, but it is. <laughs> and also gives you all the sources as well so you can double check, making sure that you're happy with them. So perfect, now we have the output and you can see that it is quite extensive. It gives you, uh, you know, the main introduction. If you want the output to be structured in a nice way with tables and everything, you need to specify that. And let's go through this as well. I just want to read the first bit here. Well, this is really interesting. So just reading this a little bit, uh, it says changing SEO landscape. So search engines like Google are introducing AI driven features, yeah, that provide answers directly to the users. This threatens to reduce organic search traffic to websites, potentially impact SEO driven marketing. In a survey, in a 2024 survey, so really up to date, now it's, you know, Feb of 2025, 70% of SEO uh, respondents were worried that the impact of Google's generative AI results would impact traditional search traffic. Yep, that is good. So it gets you really research components, incredible. Okay, so now comes the interesting part. How do I turn this into a blog post? Well, thankfully we are use 30 Mini, which I've been using for content writing and it's incredible. I'll do a video about that later down the line, but I really wanted to show you this because I think it's quite cool. So you really need to think about how you want to write and what you want the output to be. Whenever you're prompting these models, particularly O3 Mini, you really need to define the output, what do you want to write. Let's say we want to write a blog post that is around 2000 words and is in a relaxed tone of voice, for example. And I define the tone of voice there and define the angle you are taking. The beautiful thing about O3 and all these reasoning models is that they're smart enough to give you a really interesting angle about that topic, which creates, which creates really unique content, particularly if you know the topic a little bit and you wanna tackle a specific angle. I really, really like this. So let's do that together. Um, I'm going to write the prompt here so you can take a screenshot, copy it, but it's nothing too complex here. Okay, so I'm saying thanks. I always say thanks to GPT. Never know when they're gonna take over the world. Hopefully they remember that. <laughs> I would like to turn this blog post into a blog post, sorry. The blog post should be around 1,500 to 2,000 words in length. The length doesn't really matter. I just know for this topic, it's gonna be somewhat complex. So that length I'm comfortable with. It should be written in a relaxed conversational tone, but ensure it's concise. Ensuring that it's concise usually gets rid of the AI fluff that sometimes it writes. You must include the, the research URLs you found as resources in the blog, and these resources as hyperlinks throughout the blog post to the corresponding keyword. This makes sure that it's backlinked appropriately to the right resources, adding to what Google calls EEAT. I would like to take the angle of this topic that uh, this is an opportunity to learn how to use these tools now. Otherwise, someone who knows how to use, how to do your job and use these tools will probably replace you. So that's the angle I wanna take here. I'm gonna hit enter. I've got GPT-03 Mini uh, selected. I can use other models, but 03 Mini is more than enough for this. I've got deep research and search and that disabled. I don't want it to do any more research and I'm gonna hit okay. Now. Remember, a few, while it writes this, a few things to keep in consideration. It's got great access to the internet, 
but it doesn't have access to keyword research data, meaning keyword difficulty, related keywords and all that. So if you wanna add that in there, you need to do keyword research separately and then give that to it or add the research component or the keyword research component after. So that's really up to you, but you need to keep that into consideration. So you can see because it's 03 mini, it started to really think about this first of all, and then it started to write a blog post. And you can see that throughout it, uh, it's, and this is what O3 can do so well, it can inject the resources appropriately. I love how it does that. And it also gave me the sources at the end, but we don't need to add that into the blog post. Let's read one sentence and then you can decide if you actually like the output or not. So embracing autonomous AI agency in marketing and SEO, learn to thrive or risk being replaced. I don't mind that. The first sentence. Have you ever wondered what would happen if a machine could handle your marketing tasks while you sip your morning coffee? Autonomous agents are already transforming the marketing and SEO landscape. And the clock is ticking for everyone who isn't already, isn't ready to learn these tools. In today's blog post, we're gonna to touch about, you know, that's not bad. I might amend it a little bit, but you can always give it a sample of your tone of voice and it'll replicate that incredibly well. Now, is this ready to be post it into your website? No, and I always say this, whilst it's got the backlinking to the sources, you also want to backlink it to other parts of your website, and you want to add supporting images, illustrations, whatever that is to make this blog post a lot more uh, readable and user-friendly to read. You probably want to go down and inspect the headlines, for example, It's asking, answering the frequently asked questions, which is really good. What are autonomous AI agents? Perfect. So here I could probably say boosting efficiency and productivity in your SEO work, for example, just to tie in those keywords a little bit more naturally, whatever that is. Uh, in the flip side, job displayment in the workforce, I like that. It's really, really good stuff. So when you are uploading this to your website, you want to make sure that you add additional images like I did. So here I also added even a little illustration. I can't illustrate. I use napkin.ai to do that. And still it's well researched and everything like that. Don't forget to add a um, meta description. So within the same conversation, and that's what makes this tool so incredible because in the same chat, you can create the blog post you can practically create everything else that you want. We're going to say, uh, okay, now uh, generate the SEO optimized meta description. Great, and now I could even go to GPT-4.0, change the model, and I could ask it to make sure that it's DALI here and generate a feature image for this blog post. And because it's all within the same topic, it's doing that for you. now. I don't like DALI as image generation. That's a personal preference. I'm actually using Google FX, but you get the idea. If you wanted to, and if you don't mind DALI's images um, and it flows with your brand, then you know that's okay. There you go. I created an image for that. Really cool stuff. Just to keep, just to be very transparent here. A lot of people are gonna say, will this rank on Google? I don't know. I just use it, but I'll let you know. Another, the other question that I get doesn't. Google penalize AI content. No, it does not. It penalizes bad quality content, content that adds no value. But here, the beauty about this is that you're doing an incredible amount of research and you are compressing or digesting that information in a blog post in a really nice way. So you are adding value to the reader. This makes this really, really interesting. And remember that SEO is just not about writing good content. That's a big aspect of it, but there's a lot more to it. There's backlinking, on-site SEO, and a bunch of other things that you need to consider in order to rank your website. If you wanna learn all that stuff and how to maximize SEO with AI tools, we have a school community that teaches you how to do that called the AI Ranking School Community. We're helping a lot of people win at SEO very, very quickly. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to the community below. If you don't wanna join the community, that's all right. All I ask that if you found value in this video, consider subscribing and give this video a like to help the algorithm and make sure that a lot more people find this video and they learn how to write content with research, with deep research from OpenAI. Cheers, I'll catch you in the next one.